Welcome again to Berlinale Talents 2022. So this week with 200 wonderful filmmakers with the topic Labors of Love will come now to an end. But before we will end, uh, we start the harvesting. And this harvesting started already yesterday evening with the award ceremony of the Berlin International Film Festival when the winner film was announced, Alcaraz, done by Carla Simon and further for alumni of Berlinale Talent. So this was the perfect gift to our 20th anniversary of Berlinale Talents. And uh, there was a cry inside the house here. And also today we started uh, with harvesting with the 200 filmmakers, uh, our talents tank. It was all around uh, the topics of sustainability, also about sustainability working conditions in the film industry. And uh, so Alcaraz perfectly fit in our theme, Labors of Love, and now the work is done. And uh, Florian, can you tell us a little bit more about this family uh, connection also with the alumni of Alcaraz and the team? Yeah, first of all, also a warm welcome uh, from my side. And uh, it's interesting, uh, you just said uh, Labors of Love as our topic of this year. And I really, really like that. So because uh, having chosen the topic Labors of Cinema um, and Labors of Love, we can take that as a similarity for today and for now um, because it's of course a lot about the passion for cinema it's a lot about the passion of the work for cinema that we've been tackling here over the course of the week and this is also what we will see here um, in the discussion around Alcaraz but Talking about love again, um, uh, it is that team that uh, Christina just mentioned, and uh, it would take a while to just list them all up, but what is important for Berlinale Talents is always to stress, there is the director, uh, Carla Simon, she had been with us for the first time in 2015 as an alumna, nowadays coming back to the festival already for the second time uh, with her film. Um, and of course, she was also involved in the development process of that film, uh, the previous film uh, in the um, in our part in the talent project, in the script station, sorry, um, and also Alcaraz very strongly with our colleagues from the co-production market. And again, as we gather here, 13 dis different disciplines uh, at Berlinale Talents, uh, I'd also like to stress and warmly welcome on the screen, behind the screen here today and congratulate you, um, Daniela Cachias, the cinematographer, for example, Anna Pfaff, who is here with us today, Maria Zamora, a producer, uh, who actually came already to Berlinale when it was still called Berlinale Talent Campus. It was in 2006. Um, and of course, also the co-producer Giovanni Pompili. So you see long-term relations, family, and we can't celebrate family without Carlo the, Chatrian. The artistic festival director of Berlinale. So please join us here as well. <laughs> Thank you. You make me feel like... Uh, your father, I hope I'm more like a brother. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it's no generation, even though we will have time to talk about generations maybe with the Carla and her team. Yeah. Carla yesterday said whenever she comes to Berlin, something magical happens. So, um, so how did it feel for you yesterday, the magic on stage well, or the magic around that film? That's very true, I guess. It's, um, it's a film that has enchanted the audience and the jury. And we were very happy. It's, as you said, Carla, said it rightly at the ceremony. I feel like I am a daughter of the festival, so again, family. And then we are proud to be her symbolic pa fathers mm -hmm. and mothers. Yeah. And we've been speaking about long-term relations, but it always needs a film, right? So to bring people back, uh, there need to be a film. Uh, what is your, your take on, let's say, festival relationships with people? So even in the long Well, term? in the case of uh, um, Carla and Alcaraz, uh, I think uh, it's, it's really the result of, uh, of our relation that has been built over the years, as you have mentioned. Alcaraz is probably the first project I have scout. Uh, in 2019, so basically before starting um, my job, I had uh, the opportunity to talk with uh, Carla and Maria. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, it's about film, but it's also about um, following the projects. I think uh, Berlinale, like other festivals, but maybe even more, is a kind of community. And the community uh, lives also outside of the 10 days of the festival. People f feel that they belong to a family even when they travel abroad, even when they, even more maybe, 
-hmm. So if we want to go on with the metaphor of family, yes, the bond stay even when the film is done or even when the film is in preparation. So you would say um, if the talents want to reach out to their brother in Berlin so they can just write you an email or what should they do? <laughs> of course they can write an email uh, and I will try to be um, as fast as uh, precise in answering. Uh, that's the pleasure of, uh, of, I guess, for all of us to be connected with young voices, to be able also to listen to them. Then uh, when the communication is too much, of course, uh, there is a risk that uh, no. you can lose track of, of connection. So please, if you want to write me an email, maybe do it in spring or summer. Fall and winter is more complicated season. Oh, brother at Berlinale D, I guess. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, very Brothers, good. Yeah. So we, we call that session Work is Done, um, which is, I would say, almost true for all Nostra Talents because it's also our last session. And it's also very, very important to uh, say hello to the big group again, which has been with us this year in 70 more than 70 countries uh, and it has been an amazing week for both Christina and me and also along with the team which is actually quite big so if you would see the room here you would see <laughs> that there is people that there has been an audience for you over the entire week which has been working hard labors of cinema labors of festival to make it happen and work isn't entirely done for Carlo because Carlo has now the duty in Pleasure to be the host of uh, two wonderful guests we have here with us on stage. Carlo, oh, the go. floor is you. you can yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much also, Carla and Anna, to being here with us today. Yes. <laughs> so, hola, hello, hello, hola. Carla, hello, <laughs> Anna. Um, it's a conversation, and uh, I think we already said, uh, thanks to uh, Florian and Christine, probably one of um, the topic, uh, which is family, yeah. right? I think your way of uh, uh, dealing with cinema has a lot to do with the family. Being in a family, built another family. Yes. So maybe I would like to start with that. Yes. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, family is, I would say, my subject because I come from a big family. Mm -hmm. and, and it's true that it translates also on the way of working, mm. no? Because uh, obviously we created the family between the actors when we made um, when we made this film with uh, non-professional actors, but the crew was also a family, and some of us were a family before making this film, like Anna and I and Maria as well, because we had collaborated for uh, in summer 1993, which was uh, my first film, and and some of the um, of the crew was also already in that film, so. I don't know, it was something magical in the shooting that the, the, the fact that the actors had to create a family and, and we work for that, it also translated to the crew, the ones that we were a family already and the new ones. So it was a, a very nice uh, way of making a film. Anna, in the f in a family there are always, uh, most always, uh, um, roles. Mm -hmm. So maybe can you tell us about the role first of Carla in the family? Is she the, the, the big mother or the sisters <laughs> or, uh, or the little wow. kid? Or the <laughs> little kid? Difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm very slow in, in this kind of thinking. Uh, I have no one concrete answer. One answer. But for us, it's important that the the cinema we believe in uh, go far away from only cinema, and it's like life. And maybe in one moment we are like sisters, and maybe in one moment we are like she's the mother, or another moment <laughs> I I don't know. We can well, I change. Think, I think you are my mom more than um, I am in your this mom. in this film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. In which sense? <laughs> <laughs> because. Um, in this film and in the previous one as well. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you know when I get to the the editing room, I'm I feel like shit honestly. <laughs> like when I end the the shooting, I always have this big crisis, and because it's the moment that you face what you've done and it's done. And I mean, at this point, I always would like to shoot everything again, mm -hmm. and we cannot do that because mm -hmm. usually don't you don't have the money to do that. So there is Anna <laughs> to tell me that. Um, be patient. We are gonna, yeah, mm. we are gonna edit this. This mm. is not what what you are gonna see at the end. We have to work. Yeah, mm. It's like a kind of faith on the yes. on the movie on the no the the ground the material the, the material. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I think that um, 
she she's the editor of the mm. film but also my mom or almost psychologist <laughs> <laughs> doing this mm. this whole process where yeah where you feel very vulnerable yeah maybe one thing more about that uh, because as you said uh, Carla you work um, not entirely but with part part of the team was already with you with the previous one so yeah. they know uh, how do you work they know you as a person so how is important for you um, and also for your uh, for your um, for your crew to know before and not only in terms of emotional but also in terms of uh, uh, understanding how do you work yeah. i mean and the two uh, film uh, uh, summer 1994 and um, and uh, and this one had the same uh, way of working or not because con structurally wise this one is more complex is more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. well I think the advantage of knowing each other is that you grow together mm -hmm. and I feel uh, filmmaking is a research so y you have to take every project or I I do take every project as a as, as something that it's a challenge, I don't know how to do it, so we have to learn it together. And so we put some, some challenges to, our, challenge to ourselves just to, to, to find a new way to make this film. And with Alcaraz, we felt a lot like that because we came from summer 1993, which was a, a film that was following the point of view of a girl. And now we were facing an ensemble film and we didn't know how to do that. So we had to learn it together. And I think that uh, this kind of way of making films that means you are searching for something all the time and you are not quite sure what's going to come in at Out. the end. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's something that I don't want to lose and I think that I have the right people mm, on my side to, to do this research mm. together. Although there are some bases that um, I think we maintain mm. because it, I, like the tone that it's something that I look for and it's similar in both films, yeah. So the topic of this year is labors of cinema. And um, what uh, I think it's important to remind, maybe nowadays even more, is that cinema is something that uh, has to do with uh, the reality. Hmm. Nowadays we work with, uh, no more with analogic, so we don't touch the print, but I guess, and maybe the question is, to the, for the editing, there is still this element of working with the reality. I mean, with uh, tools, with people, with something that you touch. Mm. Uh, sometimes, uh, and then, and, I mean, and sometimes you have to be um, rough, and sometimes you have to be gentle. And I think in the in the editing, especially in Alcaraz, there is this kind of uh, cut. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very yeah. sharp. Sometimes it's more gentle. So I would like to ask uh, a little bit. Uh, Anna about that. Um, one moment. The rough or gentle? Gentle. Uh, exactly. As veces es como tomar un, col un golpe y as veces sí. hay, hay que como que cuidar la, 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 la secu las escenas, las secuencias, mm -hmm. las imágenes. Yeah, it, sí. it, maybe it's like in, in the rhythm, no? You mm -hmm. need uh, uh, different kinds of rhythm in the tone too, mm -hmm. no? and in editing it's very important, this, this kind of uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And in the, the, the way we, we work with the reality in the editing was completely mm, super important because, uh, but it's not <laughs> only in editing, no? Carla works a lot in the shooting and with the actors. Uh, there are no professional actors, no, it's, it's a very important decision to work with this mm -hmm. kind of reality. And in, in, the, in the editing room, uh, we always, when we watch the, the rough material, we always watch um, searching for this magic of reality in every uh, toma, I don't know how to say, in every, take, in every shot. In every take. Yeah, yeah, in every take. And I think it's, it's one of the most... Uh, Mm, particularities of the material that uh, we follow. Mm. Mm. There are many take for uh, many takes for uh, or or not so many. For in Alcaraz? Yes. 
Not so, not so many. many. Not so many. Mm. Not so many. I but wish sometimes mm. we had time to make mm. <laughs> to, to to take more things. Yeah. <laughs> but there are uh, two kinds of way of shooting. No, in yeah. Alcaraz there are uh, some parts of the shooting more like uh, take uh, take one, take, one, take two, think, take three, yeah. and there are a lot of scenes like more documentary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, and it's yes. very different the way we watch this material and w and yeah. the way we can modulate with this mm. material. Yeah, with this footage. So. But I think mm -hmm. the, the important thing talking about reality is that when Anna and I watch the material um, we always agree because mm. we are looking for the same and which means that I, I would I, I would say that we're looking for an error but it's it would it's probably a, a wrong word but it, we're looking for something that it's unexpected mm. you know that mm. there's this little gesture of the actors or something that they say that it's not quite correct that I don't know mm. something that f makes the material feel alive mm. and sometimes there are some takes that you don't have it, mm. <laughs> so we go with a normal take, and then sometimes, <laughs> it we, happens. yeah, it yeah. happens, and and it's good also in the in this kind of material that was more documentary. Usually, it happens more. Yeah, mm. maybe we watched uh, the the sequence, the first sequence we have. Okay. But first, I would like to ask you something, Carla. You on the set, you look at the at the, um, at the scene, or you look at the monitor. I look at the monitor. You look at the monitor. Yes. You want to be sure what <laughs> is in the frame. I'm super close to the actors, mm -hmm. always. So I take the little monitor mm -hmm. and I sit mm, or, or stand wherever I can talk to them and they can hear me and even feel me close. But yeah, I look at the monitor because at the end it's what's going to be It's on the, the frame. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at some frame. We start from a sequence from the v very beginning. And yeah. Beginning of the film, uh, where were you sitting or staying uh, in the car? In the car, next to the next to the car. Clo close to the car, yeah, but outside. <laughs> it was very small. Very small. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and this, uh, uh, if if you want, this uh, sequence was something that you have rehearsed with the kids, something that you have uh, rehearsed with the camera, or. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we rehearsed actually. 
I rehearsed in a, in, in a kind of uh, my own way. <laughs> so for rehearsing this scene, for example, something that we did one day, it was like we, we were one afternoon at the, at the house that I rented uh, in this area to have the rehearsals. So I was with Iris, the, the girl and the two twins, and we spent a lot of time together just getting to know each other and in this case kind of building up the relationship they have as cousins. So there was one day that we um, we found a book uh, with the planets and uh, and we tried to learn the planets and we did a big um, poster with all the planets as well and we hung it on a, on a room that it was supposed to be uh, it is room in, in that house mm -hmm. when we were rehearsing and playing. Um, so, at some point, uh, we, when we rehearsed the scene, we said, okay, do you remember that we were uh, kind of studying the planets <laughs> that day? So now uh, we're going to be in a, in a spaceship, and, uh, and then we are going to see, uh, imagine that we go through these planets. No? So it just, for me, the rehearsals are something that I do bit by bit, you know, on, on things that I know they will, they will be in the film. Um, but uh, it's a way of, like, building it very slowly so they get kind of a shared memories mm -hmm. between them and it's um you know it's something that sometimes i, I think uh, maybe it's not useful you know <laughs> but i really think that uh, somehow it is because it's something that it's very abstract and you cannot see it but the thing is that because we had these shared memories we get uh, to the set and we say okay we're going to play to this thing that we played mm -hmm. once so let's do it again and then and then the, if there is something specific that i want them to say i tell them you know so at some point you have to say uh, meteorito yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> so, so yeah, it, this is the way we work. The narrative of this uh, beginning, it's, uh, it's very simple, but at the same time uh, quite complex, because we start with the uh, landscape. This is probably a very obvious way to open a film, but mm -hmm. then we understand at the end of the, se the sequence that there is a purpose of this uh, mm -hmm. uh, starting. Um, and, and the thing that I, I think is pretty amazing in this film, because your film is, is, uh, appears like, uh, looks like a simple movie, but if you go into, into details, and we are at the, a talent, so it's important for the filmmaker to understand, it's very complex. And here, for me, um, the thing that is done through the editing is the fact that the kids are inside the car, they are looking outside, and then at the end, from outside, they're looking at the car. Mm -hmm. So this is really given by the editing. So maybe you can tell something about Mm. about that uh, yeah, in the the first you told about the landscape it, it's very interesting too because uh, during the process of the editing we have this landscape on and off of the movie um. a lot of time <laughs> yes. uh, it was like changing like every week no, no not every week but <laughs> a lot but very often <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes because for uh, for us the the landscape was very important but there was not a really match uh, mm -hmm. um, between the landscapes and the scene with the car because the landscapes are like super sh uh, sun shining mm -hmm. and the car is, mm, and, and it's what reality come into the film and <laughs> came into the editing uh, mm -hmm. room too uh, and we have to adapt to these uh, kind of things. Mm. And because the, 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 the car scene was cloudy. Yeah. And so we did all these uh, landscapes for the beginning of the film, mm -hmm. and they were super shiny, and, and mm. it was so, like, it just didn't fit. Mm. And the idea was that we would have the voice of the kids over the landscape, and then we would get to the car. I see. And we tried this, but sun and, and cloud, mm, no way. Work, yeah. So and that's why. Yeah, and it's a way to work with time too, and it, it was like super, uh, ex mm -hmm. yeah, it was not matching. And, and when we put the, the, the title of the film, in, in the middle and the landscape uh, grow like mm -hmm. symbolically in in this uh, first uh, the first Pre part of the of the film and in as uh, the the child inside of the car and outside of the car we work a lot in the construction of this sequence too like in the a lot of in the rhythm editing is always uh, a, a work about layers and like mm -hmm. um, depurating process 
and we have a, a, a middle part in, mm -hmm. in this sequence and at the end we cut, we did like a big ellipsis when the child uh, watched the machine and we had the child going out and watching the machine and running away mm. and in one moment we thought it was so much better to cut and they are running and you uh, haven't seen the machine and then you discover the machine with the kids when the machine is, no, with yeah. the car is in the air and discovered the car um, from the kids in the large shot, it, mm -hmm. it was... Uh, Much more stronger. Yeah, yeah. Mm. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And maybe some little details that are important also for, for, for young filmmakers. Um, something in uh, Alcaraz, uh, which for me is very strong, is the use of colors. Mm -hmm. So, well, I noticed that the car has the same color as your, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> your sweater. Um, so, and, and the car, the car has the color of green, which is also something uh, related to what we have seen at the beginning, mm -hmm. and a big contrast with the um, uh, yellowish, yellowish of the of the. So, can you tell something about about that? Because I think about everything color, is yeah. maybe that's the car you want to use, and that was the color. But in any case, the way you use it, it's because yeah. it's like they are taking away something. We don't unveil anything, but this sequence resonate with another sequence at the very end of the film. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But no, about the color, um, we, th we thought a lot about the color because the landscape has its own color. We cannot change that and we love <laughs> that. And it's uh, green and, and, and the earth color, yeah. or brown. So we talk a lot with, uh, with Monica Bernoy, who is the art uh, director. Um, and we agreed that the, 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 um, the set had to have very kind of uh, plain colors in general, because so, so when we feel the nature, when we see it, and, and the house is more plain, no? Mm -hmm. And also we decided that where we would have colors would be on the, on the, um, the, on the clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Anna Aguilar is the, is the, the dress designer, and uh, what we did with her, it was a very kind of... Uh, entertaining and, and, and funny and interesting job which was to because they they are many characters so we put with it a big big in a big big wall we put them all uh, by days trying to see you know, so in these days, they have these scenes together. So let's think what kind of shots they will be together in, in the same frame. So, and because we have a lot of characters, that was, that was kind of like a puzzle. Uh, mm. But we took, uh, so, so she made first like their own, uh, how do you say, like um, uh, cupboard for, mm -hmm. each, uh, for each character. And then we took the photos and tried to organize it in a way that made sense for the shots that we would have. Mm. So I think that, uh, yeah, we, we worked um, on, on a kind of colors in, in a general way, but then we thought in a specific shots uh, on, on the way that they, they would be dressed. <laughs> Maybe we watch another sequence, okay. if you agree with me, and uh, we can go with the second one. Uh, well, we don't say anything. We watch and then we will uh, okay. talk. Perfect.
a scene that is very important because um, narrative wise mm -hmm. uh, but I would like to start first with something uh, uh, more um, general. Your, your film, uh, we said at the beginning, is also about different generations. And uh, we have seen uh, in, the, in the beginning the, the little ones. And uh, the, the work with the camera doesn't change much, but the rhythm within that frame is totally different than the, in the rhythm with this one. Mm -hmm. So what I, we, I know that we already discussed about that. What I, I was really impressed is that the rhythm change according to the character. So here, uh, it's not about the camera, but it's about the, the way the people talk and about also the way the camera follow the, these people. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can tell something, because it, for me it's like different sequences are inhabited by different times or paces. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is something really intuitive as well, you know, in, the, mm -hmm. in, in how the camera responds is to what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a bit of an example of mm -hmm. what Anna was saying exactly. before. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's um, so this scene uh, was shot in a in a way that was so w we knew the camera movements that we wanted going from Mariona to the to the figs and hands and to the grandfather, but um, this was a really difficult scene for mm. uh, acting wise because the grandfather had to tell a story mm -hmm. and um, and and this story for him was quite complicated to to get it right because uh, it's not what. It, it ended up uh, in the editing. Mm. It was uh, longer, and and he would get a little bit confused, you know. So we, even if we rehearsed it a lot, it was we all knew this scene was uh, one for the grandfather that that would be complicated, no? So we decided to shoot it in a very free way. So the camera was going from one to the other, and and then what happened at the end is that we realized that. This story that it was quite long was not so important, so we decided to take out one part of it and leave it with the minimum words uh, that would get the audience to understand, you know, like what we needed them to understand in terms of uh, of, of the narrative of the film. And so we decided to start it by this part where they are in silence because suddenly. It just was uh, bigger what they were saying, what mm -hmm. were they were doing, than if they were talking all the time, no? So, so we had a lot of material for this scene, right? Mm -hmm. uh, quite, quite yeah. a lot, yeah. And it was very important uh, when when we were editing. Uh, at the beginning, you are a little bit lost with all the material, no? In this mm -hmm. sequence, for example, and when we find no one direction, it was like. Um, uh, put the accent mm -hmm. on the only the hands, and we start not like editing the hands mm -hmm. with the fix and the hands with the fix, and it was like uh, super long <laughs> hands and fix, and but it was yes. one way. Later we work again and again and again, and there are no so much hands and fix, but it was the way we find the this kind of ritual mm -hmm. between the grandfather and Mariona. And, and it like uh, the, this connection between them to uh, start the history and the mm. uh, traspaso. I don't know how to say. Uh, mm, yeah, like the um, hand on, over, no, hand, hand over, yeah. hand over. Mm. <laughs> from the fix and the history mm. and yeah, the familiar mm. memories. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. also on a very basic level. Mm. On, in this scene, especially when you when they are under the fig tree, yeah. how many people were around them? Um, under the fig tree? Well, yeah, because the scene is very is yeah. a, is a close up. I mean, yeah. under the fig is also the moment where the father is uh, telling the story. Because mm -hmm. what makes also the story relevant is that while he's telling the story, it's basically surrounded or and embraced by the fig tree. Yes, it was just the camera and me. And the sound was. And the sound was well, and the sound as well, but um, but with a big uh, okay. boom. And they also had the uh, how do you call it in English? The the little mics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, the sound wasn't as close as I we see. were. So it was very intimate. Yeah, scene. it yeah. was. You and then there they, there were a lot of people in the shooting, yeah. but mm. they were far. Uh, well, I mean around, but mm. but yeah, it felt. It felt intimate, yes. And during this scene, you said before, my baby is interesting. During this scene, you 
intervene uh, or you let the things go in and then you talk after we have to do it again or uh, you have to say this in that way or no I, I intervene a lot <laughs> Carla talks a lot during the shooting and a we lot. have to cut <laughs> and we have to cut it yeah. yeah no but you know the thing is that um they they get used to hear my voice and mm -hmm. not look at me. Mm -hmm. So somehow I'm I'm there to guide them, mm -hmm. but um, but it just yeah it's it's my way of kind of being present in their acting and being able to say what I want mm -hmm. them to say and where I want them to go, but um, without. Mm, yeah, the editing noticing at the end <laughs> because we have the, the, the important thing is that uh, we don't talk at the same time yeah. because my, my yeah the, the sound record is, then uh, is uh, yeah <laughs> yeah she she really understands this way of working but it's true that uh, that sometimes you have to discuss how to do that mm. no so so because the story was complicated I was uh, I was kind of giving some instructions to the grandfather to tell it, no? And mm. then obviously for if it was important also to have this moment of silence where they were just speaking mm -hmm. because this was not on the script, but I, I had the feeling in the shooting that it would be just safe to have it, uh, yeah. to, to, to feel more this ritual, no? So sometimes there are some ideas that you you see clearly when you're shooting. Um, yeah, but the, the, the important thing for me, the most important thing for me of this scene is the fact that previously we created this relationship and that Mariona felt that she she was there to listen the grandfather mm. for real, you know? And she, in her real life, she has a really close relationship with her grandfather, oh. which is amazing. Like when I, when I because I asked them a lot of questions in the casting to know like what kind of family they have and what kind of relationships they had, uh, and and then I soon realized that Mariona and I was really close to her grandfather, and when I brought her together with the with this uh, grandfather, the connection was really easy to be, because. Yeah, because the grandfather obviously mm. has grandchildren and because Mariona was really open to mm. to experience this. So we work a lot on on, that. on on the grandfather telling stories to Mariona and Mariona, for example, did an interview for like homework. Uh, but this was fiction, but we did this is our way to prepare the, the relationship. So she did an interview for homework to the grandfather where he ha she had to ask a lot of questions about the civil war and what he mm. knew and this kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, there is also, of course, the element of the big history. So there is the story that the film is telling, but also there is the history. There, there are also uh, elements of the tradition hmm. of, of, the her of the land where the, the story takes, uh, takes part, which I think it's, it's important. Mm -hmm. Going back, because the, the topic is really to try to stay grounded, mm -hmm. can you tell us about the casting? Yes. Because, uh, I, 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 well... <laughs> <laughs> no, the casting... Um, was long. Uh, it took almost a year, which for me it's a, it's a privilege we had because of the of the um, of the budget of the film. Usually you you cannot be for a year mm -hmm. uh, doing a casting process, but this film needed that. So I think that I was very lucky that Maria, the producer, understood this, and we gave it its time. And, and and also we were lucky because we started this casting before the pandemic because I'm sure we had to postpone the film one year mm -hmm. because of, of the COVID and I think that there is something worse than that that could have happened that was having to make this casting in in the pandemic because with the masks and not people people together um, this it's wouldn't happen yeah. so we went to the village festivities of, of all the villages in this area where they they grow fruit so mm -hmm. a lot of which people. is maybe for, for the audience to understand we are in Catalonia so yes it's the southern part of Spain it's not not the south and the, the north the north uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's interior in Catalonia, mm. so it's in the border between Catalonia and Aragon, which are mm -hmm. two regions. And it's a place where uh, there are a lot of farmers. And it's a place where people usually don't go. <laughs> they don't go to, to, to visit or to mm. do touristic uh, activities. Um, so, so, yeah, the, the, my interest for this place is because the landscape is very interesting. So it's not a wild nature, it's mm -hmm. nature built by man. By, by man, yeah. Yes. By the human. And they're basically plantations. And it's really flat, so you, you have a lot of a sky. And, and it's... Uh, 
everything looks the same, no? So it's a big, big area. Mm -hmm. So we went to this um, this area to to do the auditions and to f look for people. So we would be in the in the festivities and just look and say, okay, maybe this this one and this one and this one, and we invited them to come to the the auditions. And we saw about nine thousand people. It nine thousand. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> but because they were so excited to have someone shooting a film there, um, so it was really easy to convince women and children and teenagers, but it was harder to convince the men because they are working the land. So when they kind of guessed that the film would be set in, in summer, they were like, don't count of me, I, I'm working, you exactly. know? So it was, uh, yeah, it took us like a long time to <laughs> convince some of them. And actually, Kime, the one who portrays the, the father, he actually was a farmer, but he's not a farmer anymore because he had to leave this, his oh, land so. as the as they have to do in the film, no? I see. Mm -hmm. So, because when, with, no, with non-professional, it's more complicated when the distance between what they live, they, they have a daily life, mm -hmm. and what they have to perform is far away. So, yeah. did you find uh, what you were looking for, or sometimes you have to adjust your character according to the, the people you have found? Um, in general, I look for people who are similar to the characters mm -hmm. that we wrote. So it's like, um, yeah, I don't adjust so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's I, why you when look I for 9,000 people. <laughs> exactly, yeah? when I have a script. Mm -hmm. But it's true that in the case, for example, for Dulos, who is mm -hmm. a mom, um, she, she actually um, was better than the character <laughs> than mm -hmm. we wrote. She was stronger mm -hmm. and she had... Um, kind of like a, a strong yeah, personality that I think it helped a lot to the character. So in, in her case, we did adapt a little bit, uh, but, but for a good reason. <laughs> I, I haven't been in the casting process, mm -hmm. obvious, uh, and for, for me it was amazing when we watched the first um, rehearsals, rehearsals mm -hmm. because I read the script and then I watch the rehearsals and it was like okay there are the sole family it's <laughs> <laughs> incredible yeah each mm -hmm. character yeah <laughs> maybe before uh going on this uh sequence ends up uh, so the editing is always uh, connecting uh, one block to another one mm. well not that put it very simple <laughs> but in this sequence, there is uh, something that happened also in other moment. If, for me, it's quite interesting. So there is a clear cut at the end because we are close. And then when you have the handover of the fig, you decide to mm. be outside of the house. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is clearly a, a decision in the writing, but mm. also in the editing. Mm. Uh, maybe you mm. can tell something about that. Mm. Mm. Yes, so this shot is important in the film because we have to recognize the, 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 lo place. the location, mm. the place, in the end of the, of the film because Mariona and Roger go there. And in, we, we didn't like to, to put the, this um, large shot mm -hmm. in, in the first part of the scene because it was like a um, break because we, we go from the hands of the figs, no, with mm -hmm. uh, Padri and Mariona, mm -hmm. and then we can leave them. Mm -hmm. But we, we, if we put this uh, big shot in the middle, it was like a break mm -hmm. in this, I don't know how to say it, yeah. Yeah. this, yeah, Is this, this current, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and for us, it, it was like, like keep um, close to them, and then go out, watch the place and leave them. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and actually we had another shot, uh, which was the reverse shot of Mariona and the, and the grandfather. Uh -huh. See, seen from the lady mm. point, yeah. point of view. Mm. And I, we were there and I was like, okay, we are going to do, I hate uh, <laughs> shooting like shot. Shot and counter shot. Yeah, mm. yeah shot reverse, how do you say it? Or reverse shot, or re shot yes. and reverse shot. Yes, yeah. I just, um, I mean, obviously there are sometimes that you have, you have to, to do, do it, it mm. because mm. Um, I mean it's it's the basics of <laughs> of the cinematic language. But um, but if I can avoid it, I do. But in that in this case, the location was hard. So we thought it was a great location, but this happens sometimes. That then you get there and you are like, mm, uh, this is not quite uh, wh mm. what I imagine or what I had in in mind. No. So we did the reverse shot, and and then. I think for me it was uh, uh, something that we found in the editing that 
we, do, we just don't need it, you know. So we have been with them all this time. Mm -hmm. We see that what they are doing. And then we have to go to the shot, which is the important one for because it's a mirror that will come later mm -hmm. uh, in the movie. Um, so, yes, it was sometimes, you know, when there is something that you don't like, um, it's good to try to mm. take it out. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it works. If I may, the, the, the last shot of them uh, seen far away gives also something more because that mm. we are with them. We know that they are bringing these figs, which we know they are very important for mm. the Pignon's family because basically mm. they were the reason for the family to survive. Mm. So we are close. We are with them close also emotionally. Mm. Mm -hmm. And with the decision of stepping back, mm. we, we see them framed. Mm -hmm. So it tells also something more about mm -hmm. uh, the change of, uh, mm -hmm. of emotion, not only because uh, um, Mr. Pignos is not there. We understand mm -hmm. something more about mm -hmm. the, the relation. So I think it's... Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's very important the contrast between mm -hmm. the places we usually watch the family, you know, in the countryside, and these like... The urban... Uh, the yes, the fancy yes. house. kind of uh, yes, house. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a third uh, clip. Maybe we watch the third clip and then we let also the talent uh, ask questions. Yeah? Sure. Okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, one of the uh, uh, Alcaraz is a film about a family, is a film about uh, uh, different generations, and as uh, often happen in uh, in the countryside, different generations live together. But it's also about something uh, wider, which is the, what is happening to the farmers, mm -hmm. not only in, Sp in Catalonia and Spain, uh, but everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And this is really probably the, the moment where this. Uh, element comes really yeah. in the foreground. Mm. So can you, can, and it's something that it's present in all uh, the film, but it's a more political, direct political moment. Mm -hmm. So can you tell something about that? How important it was for you in the writing process? It, mm. It's a scene that is very elaborated, so for sure mm. it's important and you put an effort in doing it, but maybe you can uh, yeah. explain uh, in your concept, first mm -hmm. of all. Yeah. yeah, the thing is that well, first of all, I have to say that we found the, the father, Kimet, mm -hmm. in a demonstration ah. <laughs> because they were all there. Mm -hmm. so, so it was important because um, 
I think it was there from almost the the very first draft of the of the of the script, um, because this this is indeed a way to, to to tell that this is not only these family stories; it's happening to other people, mm -hmm. and these family stories is affe is affected, but uh, by by the solar panels, no, in in, in mm -hmm. a concrete uh, way, because the the owner wants to put solar panels and uproot the the peach trees, but the other families can be affected by by anything else, mm -hmm. no. So um, so it was uh, it was interesting because I have to say it was a there from the beginning of the script, but at some point we thought, do we really need this? You know, because we are telling the story without this. And it, it was very hard to find the, the place of this scene. To position this scene. Yeah, yeah because it felt like a, an ending. Um, it was something suddenly like, okay, we go somewhere else, you know. So it was really hard to find the right fit for it. And, and I think that we really found it mm, very late very mm. late in the in the script to put it uh, right before the ending um, and for me I was amazed how well it worked uh, when we were editing and how much we got emotional when we saw it mm, in, in where it was placed f for the script because this didn't change and and it kind of so we knew that the film had a political dimension what I never expected is that it would be that important mm. because I'm really focused all the time on family relationship and on the small uh, and the micro, uh, you know, family or, or universe. universe. Yeah. And and of course, this this was important, but maybe I myself, I, I wasn't ex like expecting that it would be that important. And, and what to me this is saying is that... Um, the personal is political, and and mm -hmm. you know, and for me, the the way to talk about political things is is through the very very personal stories. So yeah, so I'm glad that we we kind of fought fought for this scene to to be in the film. And the way the, the really the narrative of the film the, of this scene and the images comes from something that you have seen, or it's more something that you have. Uh, Right, uh, you, mm. have, you have. We have written, seen. Yeah. We have seen that. Actually, you know, it was a pity that uh, we had mm, a COVID uh, during mm -hmm. the um, during the um, the shooting because our first idea with all these kind of collective uh, scenes and in, in the village scenes mm -hmm. and the festivities and even mm -hmm. the demonstrations, our idea was to go to real. Okay, mm, all, yeah. Yeah. to use the, the real yeah. happening and... Uh, exactly, yeah. so they are also shot in a more kind of a documentary style mm -hmm. and and then we couldn't do it, we had to recreate everything because of the COVID. But it was very nice to recreate this one because uh, you can see all the faces that are there, they were in the casting at some point for, mm. for Kimet usually or for the grandfather and obviously more people came. But but they were all people who had been in this kind of demonstration before. Mm. So we just follow what they usually do. and. I think the work in the editing was because the scene had different moments and and it was written like that no so we, they first arrive uh, then there is a speech then they they throw the pitches and then they crush the, the pitches yeah, and then they yeah, the throw the pitches yeah. yeah yeah so the thing was to make it feel like a, an only moment mm. right mm. Mm. Yeah, it's like 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 a river, no? To have mm -hmm. the co current, I don't know how to yeah. say it. The, the current of the, the current, river. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was the way to edit, and um, it's very important. The this um, image Carla thought like uh, zoom in, zoom out, no? For us, it was like really zoom out, and then we realized, no, the the big portrait of mm -hmm. the of this kind of reality, and for this, it was like the. The discurso, I don't know how to say. The speech. speech. The speech. Mm -hmm. The speech. And, and then after the speech, all is very, very physical. Is no the um, very near shots to the bodies and it, the the pitches. And it's uh, the way editing, it's very, very physical because it's a moment like uh, when I was uh, watching the raw material, <laughs> I watched it and I was crying <laughs> because it's very powerful and it's because this moment have to 
uh, in your bed. Yeah, mm. yeah. And and I think there is something also interesting in this scene, which is the mix in the way of filming, because we shot it in a documentary style. So we were going, you know, like mm. the speech was a guy who really does this speech, mm -hmm. and and I made him do it several times, so we could take the shot, uh, the shots of the people mm -hmm. listening. So every we just were there observing, and they were kind of doing it for real. But there is this very important shot where Roger, uh, the the, yeah. the kid goes. Mm -hmm. To the father, the father yeah. mm -hmm. and this is something that we repeated until we got it, no, because it was uh, just the, yeah. the emotional moment. So, so yes, yeah, so we were all the time kind of going like from things that were more like alive and improvised to things that were like super important. So it mm -hmm. had to be this mm -hmm. way. So we would should like take two, one, two, three. You know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we open the discussion uh, to the talent. Uh, Uh, while we let them uh, take uh, part in the um, in the in the in the conversation, maybe one thing more about this uh, scene. You said that it was important uh, to have the father and the son on the same shot because mm -hmm. before we see them in, dif in different shots. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I ask that question after because we already have. Ah, uh... oh, okay, please. Please. Hi, uh, I'm Alessandro. I'm an Italian screenwriter and film director, and uh, I really can't wait to see the, this movie and congrats for this movie. In the second scene, uh, above all, uh, I remember about uh, my childhood with my grandpa in Italian countryside. And my question is, uh, I thought watching uh, these scenes about two film directors. One is uh, Alicia Rohrwacher, and uh, if, uh, do you know The Wonders, uh, the movie? And the other one is Carlo Regadas about the, the landscape. And my question is, uh, uh, do you have some uh, uh, film references and did you have when you uh, shoot uh, the, this movie? And the second question is, uh, how uh, did you organize uh, the location scouting? Because uh, I think that uh, the, um, the landscape uh, is uh, really important as a character in this movie. So how did you organize uh, that? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so the first question, yes, we know these films and, and they were definitely references. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, what, what we do usually with the director of photography is that we do a document with a lot of references, like a lot of them. And, and so I look at here, <laughs> just, I can look we are, at it, we are I think it's by, better. We are surrounded by cameras, so I think you yes. can look and then <laughs> okay, they will. Okay, good. No, so, so what I was saying is that um, we, we pick a lot of references uh, for each scene, you know, just trying to, 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 to look for scenes that could inspire us uh, in, in any kind of film. And then we, we discuss why, no? So, so Alice was one clear reference. Uh, and also, Raigadas, uh, it was for some, uh, for some, in terms of light, for some scenes as well. And, and then, for me, the, if we talk about references for this film, for me, there is a super important film that was, uh, that it's called, uh, um, that it's Italian by all me, that it's called, the, the, in English, the wooden, the tree of the wooden clocks. Yes, l'albero mm degli -hmm. yeah, coccoli. Yeah, exactly. And in general, um, there are many Italian films that were inspiring, like uh, uh, Terra Trema or uh, Arroz Amargo. No? Um, Riso Amaro. No? Riso Amaro, Amaro. yes. Um, in general, we, we kind of... Uh, looked back to, to all these neo-realistic films because it has, it, there's something about the philosophy of how making these films that I feel um, I connect very well. So we talk a lot about these films as well, yes. And the second question was... Um, Maybe in terms of reference, I yeah. have to ask you something because it's about uh, fruit. And there is a, a film uh, that for me is amazing uh, and it's based 
on filming a fruit, a solder membrane. Ah, yeah, of course. Mm. Of By course. <laughs> this, you know, at the beginning, we had the idea of instead of going to a fig trees, mm -hmm. that they went to a membrane. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, I love that because I love Erise and I thought like this is like, like a tribute to him, mm -hmm. you know. But then we realized that the membrillo is not a, that a, a, no, no, well, uh. not that big, uh. but it's not a, a summer fruit. Okay. So it was, it, it's more. It was autumn, weird, yeah. Yeah, it was really weird. And I was like, well, we can just do it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I think it doesn't make sense <laughs> in this kind of film that it's so attached to reality. No. <laughs> and the farmers would get angry for that. Yes. <laughs> that yes. would be like cheating. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the, the other question was. Uh, Locations. Ah, the locations, yeah. Ah, the locations is a, is a big issue because in in this film we had many, and and the thing is that um, I always am very picky about options. You know, like I need to see a lot of options before choosing. So um, the, there was a, a a guy who did the location scouting, and he looked at every way in this area, which is a big area, and then we had more people coming in uh, towards the end of the process. So, so, but besides that, I, I need to go myself. So sometimes I just get the car um, and go through places just to have a feeling of uh, what, I, what I'm looking for, you know, because sometimes if, if I just don't do it myself, I, I cannot express what I'm looking for. So, so I spend a lot of time just uh, looking for houses and fields as well. Uh, sometimes together with the location scouter, but sometimes by myself. And and for the houses, we saw a lot of them because it was a difficult house to find because it was important that it was surrounded by pitches. So, and we wanted a house that w could work for inside and outside, not not only for. Practicity, of course, for the shooting, but also for the actors. Thank you so much and congrats. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see if there is another question, otherwise, I go back to my question. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Dominika from Lithuania. I'm sound designer and uh, we, we were talking, like you were talking here a lot about visuals. Uh, I watch the film it's very very touching and uh, a big congratulations to all of you for Thank creating you. this this story and uh, me as a sound designer i had a very very strong emotional feeling in the last scene where the whole family drama was very nicely told through sound textures and details and also all the amazing nature atmos atmospheres, like wind and um, and the storm that is coming, like it created the parallel to what we see, and at the same time how the characters are feeling inside. So it's very beautiful. <laughs> and I, my question is about the process. Um, what was the process with sound designer in the film? And yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes. Yeah, well, I think that the process with the with the sound it really starts in the editing, because uh, we with Anna we worked a lot on sound because we feel that you cannot take decisions if the sound is not a little bit right, <laughs> no, Anna? Yeah, yeah, because I think that the sound the the rhythm uh, that it's super important for uh, uh, draw the temporary uh, mm -hmm. begins with the sound and. Um, it, it's very, very important uh, to work a lot the sound during the the image editing. That I think that it's not a good name, image editing, because we edit image and sound, and it's mm -hmm. like cut the middle of the. And, and with the sound, you can create no atmosphere, and you create details, you create rhythm. And, and we work a lot in the editing too to create the, um, the characters, no? We have a lot of footage and sometimes we, mm -hmm. we work with different takes, sound takes and different image takes, no? And, mm -hmm. and we really are 
uh, writing <laughs> this design. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the the editing of the dialogue was mm. very important in this film because mm. there are many voices, and and they talk all at the same time. And and my idea was to you know for the audience to feel part of this family and to feel this chaos as well. And when you are part of a big family, um, many things happen at the same time. And film and the image is by them by dimensional and the sound has volume so it's the sound that can tell you that many things are happening at the same time so um, we worked a lot on the off um, off screen dialogue and and this was uh, something that affected the image so much so that's why we had to edit a lot of dialogue while we were uh, editing the image um, yeah and I think that this this is uh, I don't know. I learn a lot about <laughs> about this while making this film, and and I feel that it, and it's nice that you mentioned the last scene because uh, we were talking yesterday with Anna that maybe we should put it up a little bit, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you, earlier. <laughs> yes, yes, because yeah. it, the, uh, we are talking about the sound of the of the crane, no, that uh, is uprooting the trees because. Um, um, yeah, we just felt that uh, when we when we watch it in the in the Berlinale Palace, uh, we we felt that the first part should well, and mm. I think everything should be, yeah. up. <laughs> but this happens like you never yeah. end the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because right. the the image works in a in a very close distance with the characters, and we have to keep this kind of distance in the sound too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was still like very, very powerful, and I cried a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Let's see if there is another question. Well, apparently, ah! there are many. <laughs> <laughs> She's Bye. our friend. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> oh. oh. Hi. We lost her. Mary has seen a lot of versions of this yes. movie. You <laughs> can ask her <laughs> yes, something. Sure. Yes, because we exchange all the time. Uh, yeah. So she's also a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and Anna edits her films as well. So we exchange uh, scripts and, oh, and yeah. cuts. So <laughs> I think Mary has seen three cuts or four, four three maybe. Or four, I don't sure. know. <laughs> maybe yes. you can tell something about the. So you work with a. a a rough cut, which is like very wide or already very similar to the final version when you start uh, when you start the process. When we start showing it, or what you mean? Well, I mean uh, the, the first cut. The, exactly. Ah. Yeah. The no. first cut. Yeah. No, the first cut uh, is very close to what? Uh, no, no, because oh. this is a film that. She's back. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can wait. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> No, th th this is a film we had. The first cut was like uh, four hours. Four hours. Yeah, it's it's not closed. <laughs> it, it's not. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean because the first cut Anna did it by herself while we were uh, shooting. Uh -huh. So mm. for me, this first cut is super interesting to have a first impression of what we did. Mm. You know, because I see it all together after Anna works mm. by herself, and and in the end, it was. I mean, I think. My feeling was close to what we feel mm. now, but but it's true that we had to work a lot, and it was kind yeah. of I don't know how you say it in English, dilatado, mm. um, like too too, uh, too slow. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We it it was beautiful because after we watched the 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 first cut. Uh, we described the movie with a movement that it mm. was like the movie is like this, <laughs> <laughs> and. It's in the movie because this this is the the essence of the script and the essence mm. of the like going the way the point character. of view. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah, we we've been editing a lot of months. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please. Uh. Hi. Uh, I know about the complexity of the movie and all the time you spend with the editing. And I would like you to share about how you work in the balance between the emotional arc of the characters and the narrative, because it's such a choral film and you are always with all the characters. You can empathize with them. And it's also this powerful narrative. Then if you can talk a little bit about these processes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean this. This was the big, big challenge of of the film, no? So this kind of ensemble piece, 
that um, that goes from one character to the other, and there is a lot of ways to to make an ensemble piece. And we had some reference, but uh, we had to f try to find our own way. So we knew that from the script. It didn't have to look like a TV series, like you see one mm -hmm. The TV series are, are ensemble pieces as well, no? Yeah. So you go from one character to but the no, other, no. but by cut. So here we wanted the, this movement that Anna was saying to feel like, um, to feel like we go to one character from one character to the other through emotion. So in a way that we didn't build. Um, uh, an emotional arc for each character, but an emotional arc for the or for yeah. journey for the for the family as a, a an only body, you know. Mm. And this was a, a lot of work on the script, mm. <laughs> and it was quite uh, difficult. And we made a lot of rewriting, but then this didn't end here because then you have to write this through the camera. So where we put the camera in each scene was super important to to keep this kind of. Um, Relevo, that I don't know how you say this in English, you know, um, just when you pass on something. Mm -hmm. So so it was a, a game with a, the point of view that we had to narrate it through the camera as well. And then when we got to the editing, we kept rewriting this as well. Mm -hmm. And we made some changes that I thought they, it would be impossible to make changes because the script was like a, a puzzle. Mm -hmm. But then... This is it's possible. Uh, it's possible. <laughs> yeah. This is the magic of the editing. Yeah. So we got to the editing room and mm. and we just um, yeah found some new connections mm. and it was mm. about polishing basically. Mm. So we took out some scenes. Mm. No? Yeah, it, it, it's always possible to change, but the the um, uh, el desafío, the, the challenge, the challenge yeah. <laughs> was like. Uh, make these changes but without changing the essence of the film no mm -hmm. it, it was complicated and for us it it was very important to um one of the problems we find during the process was like a uh, keep um alive the big conflict of the family Mm. Uh, during the first part of the film, and the tension and yeah. the, the tension between uh, them and, the, and, and this um, problem, this conflict, uh, because in the second part of the film, when we go um, with each uh, character individually, we we don't lose the feeling of the main conflict, mm. Mm. and. It was very difficult for us to, no, to um, yeah, to, to get to get there to get there uh, without mm. disconnect, with a, without distension. Mm -hmm. This and for me, it was one of the challenge in yeah. during the editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Gracias. Merci. <A> tu. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Is there another one coming? Hello. Hello. Um, I'm uh, super happy to. I, I've read a lot about you, and I, I really appreciate uh, where you are today, given mm -hmm. how you've done it alone. But thanks to also these wonderful people around you, um, and that's very encouraging, actually. Uh, and mm -hmm. I love the film also. Um, I'm a young filmmaker. I, I recently started a um, writer and a, and a filmmaker, and. Um, this is a great learning experience, <laughs> watching and listening to you um, talk about how you've worked on your films. Um, I had two questions. Um, the first one is, um, so you mentioned uh, that you worked with, you know, um, like regular people who are not professional actors. And I think that's something very, um, there's something very raw about it also, because um, it sort of allows you to uh, not have to make people unlearn some of the things that they've like learned over their professional career that could be uh, that could sort of lead to something more natural perhaps so I, I really appreciate that but one thing I wanted to know was um, how many takes uh, would it take on average for example for you to arrive at um, a moment where you say yes that's what I wanted um, and the second question that I had was um, so 
obviously, you know, you are the writer, so everything's in your head in terms of the story. But then when you translate the script from words into a visual narrative, the process is completely different. And um, sometimes you could do that process on your own while storyboarding, but sometimes it also, it's very uh, important and helpful to like discuss it with the people of your team. So I wanted to know to what extent do you um, sort of um, engage in that discussion with, you know, the cinematographer or even the, ed well, I don't know if the editor comes at that stage, but um, people who are working with you um, and to sort of arrive at, okay, so this is what we want for this shot. And then obviously it sort of evolves when you're on scene um, and that I understand changes, uh, as you said, you know, it's like a process of discovery for you as well uh, while you're shooting the film. Mm -hmm. uh, so just those two questions. Thank you very much. Yes. So about the, um, the first one was, sorry, I, I cannot retain questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I the, know it was the, ah, about the, the takes. About the about takes. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so about the takes, uh, the average, I don't know. Um, I would say it, it depends, you know, because... Um, but, but maybe, Carla, I don't know, something because you already answered a bit on that, but maybe mm -hmm. the, the thing is there are some filmmakers who takes after takes, uh, it's a process to reach mm -hmm. to a point. And yeah. other filmmakers that have in mind something and they, they do the same thing until it's what they want. So yeah. in some cases, it's a process mm -hmm. to reach to a point. In some other places, you have different version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For different nuances, of course. Mm, yeah. Usually, you know, I, I'm, I'm, so when I have an idea in my head, I want this to happen. <laughs> no? <laughs> so so I, I fight for it. But it's true that what I'm looking for is reality. And sometimes what I have in my head, it's not working. And when you work with kids or natural actors, um, if something is not working, it's not going to work. You know, it's it just, I mean, you can try. Um, and if you can see and have a sense that this may work, I pursue on that. <laughs> but sometimes I'm like, wow, this this is just, it, it doesn't feel natural for them, no? So it doesn't have a logic. So I have to change. And usually also I have to say that the point of view of a lot of shots are, is sometimes the actors, no? So when we rehearse the scenes, um, we see where they put see it or, or how they would move, move, no? And if there is something that works, we take it. If there is something that doesn't work, we say, okay, so you go here and you do that, no? So it's always like um, a kind of, um, I don't know how to say it, but an equilibrium to find naturality. And what happened with this film sometimes is that as it was such a complex uh, shooting, sometimes we didn't have time to do many, many takes. And when this happened, I, I regret because uh, what, what's, what happens very often when you look for, for something natural is that you go, you let the actors do it. It's terrible. They, you know, like they, they are like that one, one after the other. You cannot see them. The camera is not working with them, whatever. So you put them well, and then it's rigid and it's horrible. So it doesn't feel natural. And then you have to do like, I don't know, five or six or seven more takes to get to a, you know, to something that is more or less what you wanted, but it's still it still feels alive, you know? And and for me, this means, um, I don't know, eight eight takes, more or less. It depends. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the other question uh, was about... about uh, how important it is to share or to receive a point of view from other uh, yeah, people yeah, in yeah, the totally. set. Mm -hmm. um, well, w with the, w in terms of the... Um, uh, mise en scène or the, or the shots we're going to do, uh, I, I see it as a process as well, you know, so I do a lot of uh, stages for that too. So the first stage is just to collect um, some um, reference for each scene and, you know, and get inspired by it. And in this process, sometimes I also change something from the script because I, I discover some things from other films that could be inspiring. So I rewrite a little bit. And once I have uh, some reference for each scene, what I do is a short list, um, a written short list that, uh, that I imagine on my head 
from the script. And this is what I share with the DOP. So we read it together and then um, and then we, we, we build on that no? somehow. And, but before that, we have to see the actors doing the scene and rehearsing the scene. So this also changes my previous idea somehow, you know? So, so I think that there are many layers to get to the final shooting list. And then you get, I get with my papers in the shooting and, and I look at them and then sometimes it's just not working like I would like. So I do, okay, whatever. And then we, we find it together in the set. No? So it depends on the scene. But for me, the, the most important premise is that it has to feel natural. And the camera has to adapt to the actors. It's not the actors who have to adapt to the camera. And this is also a little bit um, something that I think that the DOP, Daniela Cajillas, uh, had, had in mind all the time. And, and, and I think this was very useful for, for them, yeah. Maybe on that is, so she asked us about the storyboard. I, mm -hmm. Do you, because before you, sp you, you spoke about references, which yeah. I think it's like, <coughs> I'm sorry, images or uh, maybe a title of a film or a scene of a film, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but what the relation, because the storyboard is different, is really the yeah. point of view. So you sometimes you use the storyboard, you, don't ne you never use the story? I, no, I never use it. Um, and I sometimes think that if I use a storyboard, I would like be erasing all the time and doing it again. It's like, yeah. Yes, because um, yeah, I'm, I'm not um, for for me the camera is has to be alive, no? Mm -hmm. So so it, I don't like to construct everything for the shot I have in mind. Sometimes I do, you know, like mm -hmm. there is no rule for that. Of course, but. but, but in general, I, I I have this feeling that if I did on a storyboard, I would like be like, okay, we have to do this because this is cool, mm -hmm. so we have to do this. Absolutely. You know, so mm -hmm. I prefer to work on more abstract uh, thoughts. Yeah. yeah, and the references are more like photo of real places that you have uh, already looked for it, or things that come from other films or mm -hmm. it can be at whatever. It can be whatever. It's usually, but they are images. Mm. So, um, so sometimes they come from other films. Sometimes they are photos uh, for, from photographers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a painting. Um, sometimes are photos that I took at some point from my family. Um, and then besides that, so th this is just something to, that, that we picture and we see on the screen. But then besides that, I also collect scenes for uh, scenes from films that, mm -hmm. are, that I put in folders. So it's like, okay, so for this scene, um, we should watch this and this and this. Oh. So this, I have a lot of folders, <laughs> and I love this this part of, of the research of making a film, no? Because sometimes reference it's is not an image; it can be a feeling, or it can be um, mm -hmm. the sound, no? Yeah. Or it can be, yeah. And that part comes anyway after the script. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. There are I don't know how we are with time. I have um, a cl received a clear sign that we <laughs> it's time to wrap <laughs> it's very up. Clear. Um, maybe wrapping up uh, and uh, talking about family, about uh, uh, relation. The Alcaraz is a film where the creative crew is composed, uh, I would say, mainly, if not uh, only, by a uh, woman. Mm -hmm. So, what um, does it? What does it mean for you? Is uh, the result of the fact that you knew each other beforehand, or you feel that it's better this way, or is? No, this this just happened. Mm. Like we we, it's not on purpose. It's not that mm. we don't like men. Mm. It's just that um, it's a matter of sensitivity, mm -hmm. and and I think that we match it. Some of us already from the first film, and some of the the new cameras in our crew. Um, it, it's it's mainly about sensitivity and and someone who can understand my way of doing and my research and and yeah so yeah it it, it okay. was just kind of um, coincidence. <laughs> and as Carla is a very gentle voice, I know that in your family sometimes there are struggle and fight. Yeah, Is fight happen also <laughs> in Alcaraz. Happen in Alcaraz shooting or uh... fights in Alcaraz shooting. Um... You or know, the editing. No, no, no. no fight. Yeah. fight is a big, no, no, a big, a big uh, word, <laughs> yes. but like discussion. Hmm. Um, no, discuss a lot. Discuss, yeah, we, all vivid the time. discussion. Hours talking and talking, but yeah. 
No, not like no, fighting. Yeah. yeah, we don't fight in the ethics. No, no, no at all. I don't know how you did fight. No, but we, well, but we talk a lot yeah. to understand the movie, to understand the footage, to understand the way we have to attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes, and in the shooting, you know, you say I have a gentle voice, but <laughs> I had to raise my voice wo wo more than once because, you know, when, when all these non-actors came to the set and they were like 12 in the scene and I had to direct this. And at the beginning they were like, this is a party, you know, like we are, we are shooting and, and they were together and everyone was so happy. And it was, I think, like the second day of the, of the, of the shooting that I just couldn't focus because they were so happy and talking all the time that I had to kind of stand up and say, it's enough, <laughs> you know, and shout so loud <laughs> that they understood yeah. what I was doing there. And then, the, and then I told them, you know, like, I just need some silence to focus and when we are working, we are working. So, so this is a, yeah, it's a working environment. It's a working process <laughs> <Yes>. in family. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, uh, Carla. Uh, for being with us and uh, well again the congratulations for the uh, Golden Bear thank you the film will be shown in the next days in Berlin so for the Berliners please come and see it and it will travel for sure all over the world thank you thank you so thank you, thank you. <laughs>